What's up everybody? It's Lady T here with Lady T's Adventures. My name is Teresa and uh, this is part three of Henry Ford Museum. Now today uh, we're going to look at uh, airplanes, Amelia Earhart's airplane and the Wright Brothers. So that should be exciting and some of the outfits that they wore. And then there's other pilots uh, also that were famous back in the day. So, uh, so stay tuned. You guys enjoy it. Peace and love. God bless you guys. Here we go. It looks like one of the first airplanes there, huh? Back then, and I guess there was no motor. How'd you fly that thing? Oh, you steered it from the from laying down. Oh my gosh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Wright, yeah, it's the Wright Brothers, 1903, Wright Flyer. Uh, it's the longest, let's see, it's the longest flight was uh, 852 feet at an average speed of 9.9 .9 miles per hour. Orville and Wilbur Wright built the original Wright Flyer at their bicycle shop in Dayton, Ohio for approximately $1,000 of their own money. Their friend and mechanic, Charles Taylor, built the 12 horsepower engine from a rough sketch he nailed over his workbench. Isn't that amazing? Look at that. This is spruce ash cutting. Uh, I don't know what that does. And steel cable. So, the, oh, that's what it was built with. It feels like it's really uh, heavy duty. I'm gonna walk around the back of it too. Show you the front and the back. There's the propellers are in the back there. And, uh, where he's steering at laying down that that controls that thing in the back back there and and in the front i believe oh we got an old camera here too look at this old camera Here we go, we got a, another beautiful uh, airplane here. It says Fokker on it. Josephine Ford, Bird Atlantic Expedition. Wright Whirlwind Engines. So the Wright brothers uh, must have designed it too, huh? It's, it's from uh, 1925. F. F7. I love how they put all these uh, props up here. It's really neat. Huge plane, huge plane. Look at that. That's supposed to be the Arctic like the Arctic Circle or maybe that's Alaska. Really cool. And go is one of these uh, artifact cameras here about 19, 1920 it says. It's Kodak. All wave radio receiver 1933. Of, uh, Chicago, Illinois. Okay, here's something that says, look, look how they had a bathe back then. Temperature outside could reach minus 60 Fahrenheit indoors. The temperature at Head height was a comfortable 70 degrees, but at your feet it was a freezing 30 degrees. Oh my gosh, they really had it hard back then, didn't they? Before we had all the luxuries of uh, 
before we had all the luxuries of electricity and plumbing, things like that, you know. Here's Wright Cycle Company. So did, I guess they invented the bike too, huh? Or they just continued on making their own, uh, you know, there's a wheel right in the front that's different. <laughs> That'd be hard to steer like that. Oh, that's a big old plane way up there. Look at that sucker. one here see it helicopter there's the propellers there probably one of the first ones huh uh, this is a 1939 1939 historical there's all different all kinds of different propellers all over there and they're all made out of uh, wood it looks like maple so we got an aviator's uh, leather flying helmet from 1914 and then the jacket leather flying jacket uh about 1917 they said look at that it's pretty worn huh Look at it shows the old airspeed in there. They go up to 90 miles per hour, but that's pushing it, huh? It's 1910. Punch bowl, 1910. It's uh, made in England. And this uh, speedometer, uh, they say it's from about 1925. that fly We've got some really cool artifacts over here look at this bad boy it's one big plane Northwest Airlines uh, Incorporated U.S. Air Mail. Oh, okay. Got the landing gear. Look at the wing goes way over there. You guys can see how. Uh, I think there's landing gear that comes down here too. I believe, I'm not sure what that's for. I think my nephew might know. There's the wheels there, it's big old wheels. Yeah. All the rivets they put in there to build this thing. I'm gonna turn around here and show you the very front of it. So it's a Douglas DC-3. There's an engine. Got two engines there with the propellers. Here's a little bit more overview of the, uh, the museum there. There's so much to see here, but look at that. Ooh, beautiful, beautiful airplane. Here we go, the spirit of St. Louis. Charles, Charles Lindbergh's plane. I don't know if they just, the other half's inside the wall or, or what happened to it. Yeah. Pride of Detroit.
really interesting. This is from 19, 1927. There's a tech specs right there. This one's from 1929 also. That's Amelia Earhart right there. I kind of thought that was her. And that's her plane. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? After all this time, it still, still stands. Lockheed Vega. The Vega years. Amelia Earhart won races and set records in a Lockheed Vega, more than 10 in all. The plane she disappeared in, oh, I didn't know that, however, was, was a newer Lockheed model, the Electra. Elect, Electra. And that's her when she used to fly. That's awesome. Emil Amelia Earhart was the founding president of the 99s a Women's Aviation Group, still active today. Repeat, Amelia Earhart is missing. We interrupt this regularly scheduled broadcast for a special news bulletin. This is Roger Allen reporting for WWJ Radio 950. July 5th, 1937, and Amelia Earhart is missing. Somewhere in the Pacific, faint radio signals from her airplane were heard. But several days have passed since a trace of the daring pilot or her navigator, Fred Noonan, has been seen or heard. Authorities have staged the world's most massive search and rescue operation. Over 4,000 men and dozens of warships and airplanes are covering 250,000 square miles of the Pacific Ocean in a desperate effort to rescue Miss Earhart. Rumors are flying around that Miss Earhart did not have an expert's grasp on the Lockheed Electra's radio systems, and that tiny Howard Island, their destination, was too difficult a target to hit. As the days since her disappearance continue to mount, we begin to fear the worst and savor the memories we've all shared as admirers of America's queen of the air. It seemed like only yesterday when each passing year brought another record to celebrate from Miss Earhart. There was the thrill Lady Lindy gave us in 32 when she single-handedly flew her trusty and powerful Vega across the Atlantic, something no other woman ever dared. As her fame and celebrity grew, she kept the youthful spirit of adventure that gave rise to her passion to fly. When word began to leak out to the press about her round-the-world attempt, no one had reason to doubt that our beloved aviatrix would overcome all the obstacles to once again inspire a nation. It was her charm, an endearing combination of sweetness, beauty, and bravery that we'll always remember when looking back on one of history's most remarkable women. Before Amelia, two brave souls also tried to fly around the world and face the dangers of the Pacific, followed the lights to hear their story. And that's Amelia Earhart's uh, overnight bag. And that's her, uh, her shirt. And that's the famous picture of her from 1937 uh, with the plane we just saw 